Glad to have you with us for the Retirement Education Hour. I'm Megan Mozak, joined by Kurt Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler. They are financial instructors with the Retirement Education Foundation. And we have a great show for you. We talk about retirement planning, everything that's necessary to help you build a plan for success for a modern day retirement. And Kirk and Paul, well, they're going to be our guides today here on the show. We're also going to be telling you how you can get registered for one of their upcoming courses. And these are intensive courses, either a two-day course or a one-day, full-day course. And they're taught at local universities, University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, Novi Campus, and Oakland University, you can call to register that phone number 800-240-8981, or you can go to the website, retirementplanningedu.org. Now, Kirk and Paul, it's great to be here with you. I want to talk about an old rule of thumb for retirement planning, and that's the 60-40 rule. Tell me exactly what that rule is made up of, 60% what and 40% what? Well, it's it's a rule that um, that the financial industry has has sort of as a fallback default for retirement planning for just about everybody right now, and it's still very prevalent. It, it, what they're saying is essentially you're going to take sixty percent of all of your investments and put them in stocks, and then forty percent of all of your investments in bonds. Now, some of you may not recognize that's exactly what you have, but if you have somebody helping you and you're near or in retirement, that's likely the allocation mix you have in your portfolio. You likely have 60% of your money invested in equities and 40% of your money in bonds. And they could be doing it a number of different ways, whether it's a target-dated fund or a balanced portfolio, a balanced mutual fund. They could be accomplishing that mix of 60 stocks, 40 bonds, many different ways. And so to take that a step further, the rule states suggest that if you have 60% of your money in stocks, 40% of your money in bonds, then if you're 65 years old, you should take out 4% a year to live on. And historically speaking, before the last five years at least, historically speaking, you would only outlive your money about 10% of the time. But the problem, the huge problem is this old rule is really dead. Now, the industry is refusing to pivot or change or update it, but it's dead because now when we backtest this old rule, when we look to see how likely you are to outlive your money, you are out, going to outlive your money almost 25, 30% of the time now with this old rule. I mean, and we're going to talk about all the reasons why, Paul, right? Yeah, I was just going to say that, that you know, uh, part of the challenge is, and, and I sp- spent some time you know, digging in the material a little bit. Part of the challenge is is, sat, is that no one really the, the the system that we live in. They haven't come up with a decent solution, right? Most advisors don't know what else to do, and I think that's you know they don't know. I mean, the alternatives. We're going to talk about some of them. The alternatives are, are really aren't good alternatives. So I think that's part of the reason why the industry is ignoring it. They they really don't know what else to do. Well, uh, let me state it this way. Can I? In in this is one of the reasons. The Retirement Education Foundation, the charity, was was founded, and, and maybe we'll talk about that in a few minutes. But I think to elaborate a little further on what you were saying, that they don't know what to do. They don't know what to do to be able to provide a solution that isn't disruptive to their business model is disruptive to the financial service industry. There are solutions. We teach those solutions in the class. The solution requires planning. The challenge is planning requires a lot of time. Spending time on building a plan for you is not scalable, nor is it as profitable. So our industry is really stuck, and they're not sure how to solve the solution to maintain their business model. And so it's really why... Almost 10 years ago now, we started the charity, the Retirement Education Foundation, and why we teach these seven, eight-hour courses at all the major universities. So I would encourage you to register to attend one of these courses at retirementplanningedu.com, retirementplanningedu.com. All you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity, and you get this 200-page textbook in eight hours of class time. You know, I, I appreciate you, you clarifying I, what I should have said and I didn't was sort of the traditional and I, I'm always careful about this, the traditional broker. 
Yes. Right. Who, whose job is to sell you investments, only investments. They're jo- managing your money, managing your money. That world, that world has not come up with a reasonable solution. Right. I'm not saying there aren't good solutions out there, but the average broker out there that's basically investing your money. Most, Paul. M- most. What? Most brokers, most advisors that are advising people right now right. are unwilling to compromise re- their right. own revenue, profit, right, right? right. transactional right. business model. Exactly. That's it. They, right. they need to meet more of you to sell more of you. Right. That doesn't – in that nowhere in that model allots for – the 20 to 50 hours of time it really takes to solve this income problem, to be able to maximize how much income you can take out of your portfolio to live on in retirement. Paul, the, this is just one. And, and I would encourage people, if you're listening, go to our website. Go to the foundation, the charity's website at retirementplanningedu.org. Look through the white papers. Look through the interactive calculators and take the quizzes. There's a tremendous amount of resources out there. This is why almost 10 years ago we founded the Retirement Education Foundation. It's so to debunk these myths and misconceptions, these general rules, these one-size-fits-all rules that the industry are continuing to promote that is going to be very disruptive for baby boomers. I would argue for most of the people listening to our show and attending our courses – the, the disruption is they are going to way underlive, way underspend their means in retirement. In other words, they could afford to spend a lot more money if they just had a plan in retirement. But their fear of outliving their money and the solutions that the industry is still promoting to you doesn't give you the confidence to spend down any of your principal. So therefore, you way underspend, uh, way underlive your means And your retirement is dictated by whatever's going on in the markets, short-term market events. And there's a better answer than that. And and it's why we teach these classes. I'm going to encourage you again, spend, invest. That's it. $29. All you have to do is make a donation to charity to attend an eight-hour course that are being taught at every one of the major universities around Michigan. And we're streaming it live right now with COVID. And we're doing some small groups, so if you want to be in person, there's some small groups. All you have to do is register at retirementplanningedu.org, retirementplanningedu.org, or call 800-240-8981. Back with much more right here on the Retirement Education Hour. Happy you're with us for the Retirement Education Hour. Megan Mozak here with financial instructors, Kurt Cassidy, Dr. Paul Mettler. If you'd like more information on how to get registered for their upcoming courses, you are welcome to go to the website. A lot of good info there. Retirementplanningedu.org is the address. Again, that's retirementplanningedu.org or call, call to register 800-240-8981. Talking about the 60-40 rule and learned a little bit about that here to start off our show, Kirk and Paul. But Kirk, I heard you say that the 60-40 rule is dead. Why is that? So here's what I'm suggesting. It's not even what I'm suggesting. It's what the data tells us. There are a number of different softwares that allows us to take historical market events in all the different sequences of events and use plug in a allocation 60 40 and a withdrawal rate and it tells us the likelihood how many what percentage of the time is are you going to outlive your money what percent of the time will you not outlive your money and today when we look at the 60 40 in taking out 4% a year you're going to outlive your money almost 25 to 30% of the time in fact the new rule really should be if we're going to use the 60 40 conventional wisdom the new rule should be 2.8% because when we take out 2.8% a year to live on, that's how much we can withdraw. So if I had a million dollars, all I could take out is $28,000 a year out of it. If I did that, I'm only going to outlive my, my money about 10% of the time. Here's the problem, Paul, is that is a ridiculous retirement plan, right? And here's, I know we want I, Paul wants to dig into bonds because bonds, that 40% of the money that's being allocated into bonds in this rule is the key issue right now. 
It is the primary issue, and Paul wants to explain it. What I want to explain is what every major institution is forecasting over the next 10 years. Every major institution, J.P. Morgan, Barclays, Goldman Sachs, City, everyone is saying the same thing. And what they're saying is if you put your money 60% in stocks, 40% in bonds, if you use that 60-40 rule, your forward projected growth rate, this is what their projections are over the next 10 years, will be around 3%. So that isn't going to work, right? We are in the lowest interest rate environment ever. And I know, Paul, we have a lot to cover. So can you explain why bonds are such an issue right now? Can you explain why this rule is going to be so disrupted over the, and, and look, we're not alone. A lot of people have been talking about this. They're just not coming up with solutions. Right. Actually, I, w- I would say I would expand it a little bit. I, I-, I think both the 60% and the 40% is challenging, sure. and I think we should talk about both. You're right. So let's start with the 40%, and, and the 40% is in that rule, 40% of your money should be in bonds, right? And there are a lot of reasons and a lot of problems with that. The, the most obvious is the yields on bonds right now, right? So when the 60-40 rule was working, people were making money on their bonds, right? They were making the income they were generating from their bonds was subst- was enough to live on, especially when the market, their equities were doing well. Well, how much are you living on in your bonds right now? How much are bonds producing in income right now? They're barely producing anything, right? If you put money in a 10-year treasury, how much, how much income are you getting? Well, it's been under 1%. I mean, we hit its low at a half of a percent. That's right. It's it's about one percent. And what's inflation? <laughs> what is what are they saying is inflation? What's real inflation? What's, what's real inflation? I, I I would guess real inflation is two and a half to three percent. Exactly. So if you're only er- getting income, you're only earning about one percent, and inflation's two or three, you're actually going backwards in your bonds, right? You're losing money. Yeah. Right. So part of the negative re- real returns. Negative real returns. People don't understand when they when when people say that a negative real return means what's the interest rate you're earning. And what's the inflation? And if it's negative, it's negative. Go right. ahead. No, no, no. It should be because you're earning. You're not even earning enough to keep up your purchasing power, right? That's the problem here, right? right. So, so that's you know, and, and I don't, you know, we've we've seen some ups ups and downs in yields, but at the end of the day, no one is anticipating that that interest rates are going to go up significantly any day soon. They're going to go up and down a little bit, but enough to pay you enough income that it's going to make it worthwhile. So. The 64, the reason why that 4% rule doesn't work, you're just not driving enough income from those bonds. So that's, that's part of the problem. I mean, I, I think, you know, the other piece of it is I think at some point we should talk about the equity side. We right? can, but let's stay on the bonds. But let's stay on the bonds. Because here's the problem, the other problem. The other reason for the 60-40 rule is if I have 60% of my money in stocks and 40% of my money in bonds, When the stock portion of my portfolio is going down, when the market is bad, performing poorly, historically speaking, bonds have stayed level or gone up. That is not the case right now. That hasn't been the case for the last almost four years now. What we have is a stock and bond market that are highly correlated. What does that mean? It means they are going up and down at the same time. Now, it is amazing when we sit down with people in our private practices and we do a correlation study and we show people how their bonds and stocks are losing money at the same time and at the same amount over the last four years, over 90% correlated, they are blown away. Even after we, they, we teach it in the class, we teach it on the radio show, but until you physically see it, literally see it with your own eyes, I don't think people believe us. That is a massive issue, as we believe, and we're not alone. There's a lot of academia that supports this, that as interest rates begin to rise, the value of your bonds are going to go down. I know that's confusing to understand. And the problem is when equities, your stocks go down, we believe, many believe, that so will your bonds. This is, you're using a playbook that was good 10, 20 years ago. And candidly, wasn't good 40, 50 years ago. There was only about a 20, 30-year window where the 60, 40, 4% rule actually worked and made sense. But it's the most profitable, scalable strategy for the financial service industry to promote to you guys, to the baby boomers, 
to retire with. It's the simplest for them to maintain. We keep telling you the easiest part of what we do in our private practices is managing money. That is easy. It's managing income planning and tax planning, which is the most difficult. Please invest, make a donation, $29 to charity. That's all you have to do. Make a donation, $29 to charity, get you a 200-page textbook and an eight-hour course on how to construct a retirement plan in today's retirement. So if you'd like to attend one of those courses, they're streaming live and taught at all the major universities. You can go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org or call 800-240-8981. And we're back with Kirk and Paul straight ahead. Glad to have you with us for the Retirement Education Hour. I'm joined by Kirk Cassidy, Dr. Paul Mettler. They are financial instructors with the Retirement Education Foundation. We've been telling you about the courses you can register for, and those are taught at local universities or online. To register, visit retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. Or call today, 800-240-8981. If you're on Facebook and you'd like to know more, you can always search for Retirement Education Foundation. Be sure to like that page so you can stay in touch with Kirk, Paul, and the great team helping you with your retirement planning. And we're talking about the 60-40 rule today. I want to ask you a little bit about positive and negative correlation. Kirk and Paul, what does this mean? How would that potentially impact me as a retiree? So I think first we have to explain what correlation means. Kirk, I th- you know, was explaining that right now, if the market goes down, if your equities go down, most likely your bonds are going to go down as well. And I think that's un- most people don't believe that. And it's because most people have been conditioned to believe that when bonds, your e- when, when equities go down, when your stocks go down, your bonds actually go up or vice versa. The reality is historically, that's not even true. It's been true for the last, you know, 20 years, but actually when you look at the histor- when you look at the history of, of the stock market and bonds, it's actually the opposite. More often than not, historically, bonds and stocks have moved in the same direction. So historically, when the market, stock market's gone down, bonds have gone down. When the stock market's gone up, bonds have gone up. It's only recently that they moved in opposite directions. Now, why does that matter? Why do we care, Kirk? Why, is it, why does it matter? Well, d- define recently, right? So it was... 1990s. Yeah, the 90s, right? right? In the early 2000s. But really in the last three to three to five years, they've been correlated again. They're moving in the similar direction. And Paul, you're, you're spot on. He's exactly right. And this surprises a lot of investors. I think it surprises... I just, we, we just hired someone in our private practice that worked for Schwab for a long time. I mean, 25 years. Schwab, Fidelity. And when we did correlations, they were blown away. They're like, I've wasted my clients' money in 60, 40 portfolios giving people this false sense of security. I mean, it, I'm telling you, you, your advisors don't even realize this, right? And, and the reason is, is because they've been conditioned and trained otherwise. But when we look at the numbers, when we look at the performance of bonds and stocks, over the last four or five years, they are doing the same thing at the same time. And the purpose of a of a diversified diversified portfolio is means that we are we don't have too much concentration in one area or in one risk category, and we have things that are going to perform differently in similar market conditions. So that is not the case right now with sixty forties. And Paul, I know we're going to talk about it later. I know we're going to get to this, what the industry's solution is, and it's basically they're telling people to take more risk. They're telling you to have 75, 80% in stocks and only 20 to 25% in bonds, which is insane, right, for a baby boomer. See, retirees, you don't even know your whole retirement and relationship with money is going to evolve and change. If you're not retired, you don't even understand this yet. What you spend, when you spend, what you do, and how you do it is going to be dictated on your emotions related to what's going on in the economy and the markets. And if you're anxious, you're not going to spend. If you're anxious, you're going to protect that principle because everyone told you, even though you really don't care what's left at the end. But your fear, 
fear is going to prevent you from spending what you otherwise could spend. And so if the solution, like the industry is suggesting, is to take on more risk, we have the data. We know that COVID crash, when we had the COVID crash, 35% of people over the age of 65. That means 35% of the people retired, panicked, and went to cash in March, right? So they want you to take on more risk. That's the solution to this problem is to take on more risk. Just so everyone knows, if we have a 2008-like event and you are 75% in stocks, 25% in bonds, you will lose 43% of your portfolio. 43% your portfolio will be down. Most people, when, when no one else, you're not working for somebody, no one else is paying you a paycheck and you have to pay your own paycheck out of your savings, when you see your savings go down 43%, the data suggests you will panic. That isn't the solution, Paul. No, it's not. It's not, though, you know, honestly, if you you dig into this, it it really is. I mean, you know, that's all people talk about is just just buy more equities. Ramsey. Right, right. Susie Orman. Right, right. Jeremy Siegel. All of them. The big warehouses, the big firms, this is what they're telling you. Right. This is the new rule. Right. Buy buy more, you know, increase your equities 70 80%. You're going to get some good dividend-paying stocks that will make a difference. You know, the reality is, you know, when you, you know, look at the stock market, and look at the, the valuation of the stock market. They, right now, it's double what it has been historically. It's crazy expensive. It's crazy. That's the equity side of the risk, right, right? Right. And we're not trying to create fear. Here's what I would encourage everyone to do, Paul. If you didn't listen to our last week's show, if you didn't listen to our weekend show, if you really want the secret to this problem, resolving the 60-40 rule and the 4% rule, If you want the secret to that, listen to last week's show, which we talk about sequence of return risk. See, it's when you take your money out of which accounts we're going to have volatility in the markets. If we are strategic about when we take income from the right accounts, and the right accounts means the market, that account isn't down. We are not experiencing volatility in the account I'm taking the income from. That is how you fix this problem, the 60-40 rule, the 4% rule. It's understanding how and when to take your income. It has nothing to do with your investments. You guys are stuck on all these investments and picking mutual funds and picking managers. It has nothing to do with that. Again, go to our website. Go to, not our website, I should say, I'm sorry, the charity's website. Go to the Retirement Education Foundation's website and you will find white paper Interactive calculators, you'll see where we teach all the classes. You will better understand all the traps with what the conventional wisdom is that's being taught to you right now. There's a lot of traps, and that's why you need you need to make a $29 donation to charity, and you can attend an eight-hour course that's taught at all the major universities. We're streaming it live during COVID. We have small groups. You can come right into, I think, at Michigan State. The Troy campus is doing a small group. I think Eastern Michigan's letting us do small groups. We're doing small groups right here in our Livonia Learning Center. Or you can stay home and stream it through COVID. I mean, through, through because of COVID, stream it online. You'll get a 200-page textbook. If you'd like to register, go to retirementplanningedu.org, retirementplanningedu.org, or call 800-240-8981. Back with Kirk and Paul straight ahead. Always a pleasure to be alongside Kirk Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler from the Retirement Education Foundation. They are financial instructors, and this is the Retirement Education Hour. We've been spending quite a bit of time on the 60-40 rule, which Kirk says is dead, and he's giving us some reasons why. We're trying to find out what it takes to retire successfully, to get that ideal retirement here in the 21st century. We know that outdated rules of thumb just don't work any longer. You know, we hear about some of those returns, right? And we talk about that quite a bit on the show. How could the 60-40 rule impact our returns? So here's, here's the problem. So, and, I, and I mentioned it last segment, if you didn't catch last segment, I said you need to go back to last week's show where we talk specifically about sequence of return risk, or you can go to our website and we have a white paper on sequence of return risk. We've even created an interactive calculator where you can see how your, your returns 
at different times in your retirement is going to drive whether you outlive your money or not. It won't be your average rate of return. In our examples, we show where you have an average rate of return of 6% over your lifetime. But if you lose early versus lose in in the middle of retirement or towards the end of retirement is going to determine whether you outlive your money or not when you take four or five percent out to live on. So I know there's a lot of numbers. It confuses a lot of people, but you got to understand the financial industry's solution to sequence of return risk. That is the number one risk to people's retirement. The solution has been the 60-40 rule, right? These all tie together. So their solution to this one problem was to create the 60-40 rule and telling you to take out 4% a year. And the philosophy has always been, Paul, well, at least since early 90s when they first started doing this strategy, this philosophy, was you're going to take your income from your bond portfolios, your fixed income, that 40% is where you want to take it. And the theory has been is if you take it from the bonds, It makes more sense. It reduces the sequence of return risk because there's going to be less volatility with bonds. And in the 90s, that was true. In the early 2000s, pretty true. 2010 to 2015, eh, 2015 to now, not true at all. I mean, not even close to true. And what Roger Ibbotson, a Nobel Prize winning economist from Yale, Harvard, Warden, they're all saying the same thing. The next 10 years of bonds is going to be horrendous. Bond and bond funds are going to be horrendous from a return and volatility perspective. We're going to see your bond funds volatile, higher standard deviations, a lot more volatility and movement, which is a problem if I'm taking withdrawals to live on. If this is the part of the plan that has been set up for you to take your income from, well, that's, that's not going to work because if your bonds are down and you take withdrawals, your chances of outliving your money increase by 75%. This is a major issue. These, they all, these rules all kind of intertwine. I mean, that's the genius of the financial service industry, right, is they can intertwine these general simple solutions for retirement, these one-size-fits-all solutions, and people fall for it, right? And you know what? It does work for the average retiree. What you guys don't realize is most of you aren't average. You need to appreciate, and I think people are shocked to hear this, Paul. The average person that is going to retire will only have saved $200,000 for retirement. That is the average baby boomer. And these general rules will work for that average baby boomer. But if you have resources, if you've saved more than this, these rules are not going to work. You're going to either outlive your money, Or more likely, if you've saved and you have some real resources, you're going to way underspend your money that you could otherwise spend in retirement. Yeah, no, 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 no. I think a little uh, tangent. No, no, it's okay. No, I, I, I want to. You know, you made a comment that may be striking to some people. Something about bonds in the future, right? Are are not really looking good. And I was just happened to be reading Warren Buffett's annual letter to his shareholders, and, and he knows a little bit, right? Pretty smart guy. Yep. We we love quoting him. And in his letter, he basically said, the bond market in the future has a very, quote, bleak future. I mean, we're not going on a limb here, right? We're not the only ones saying this, right? Bonds are going to have problems in the future. At and, least for the next 10 years. Yeah, I think most years. people agree. Yeah, for the next 10 years. I, I don't, I think we, you know, you mentioned the term bond fund, and you also said something about bonds. And I'm listening to the show thinking, what's the difference? What's the difference? And I think it, it's important to explain the difference. So, Paul, I'm going to propose next segment. The whole segment is going to be bonds versus bond funds and how they're different, why they're different, particularly for today's retiree. The next 10 years, there's going to be a world of difference between if you own individual bonds versus bond funds. And we want to explain the difference, how they work, and why some ideas what you should be considering, right? Yeah, because because the reality is we keep talking about bonds. I know. As, as if the mo- most the, you all listening own bonds. They don't. But you all who are listening aren't 90 something percent of you don't own bonds. You own bond funds. And there's a big difference. Oh, Paul, it's like 95 percent of people own bond funds. There's only about 5 percent of people own. Now, some people will get confused. We're not talking about your e-bonds or your I bonds, we're talking about either a corporate bond, 
individual corporate bond, an individual municipal bond. That's what we're talking about, right? So most of you have all of your bond exposure in bond funds. We're going to tell you why that's problematic. And for many of you, you don't need to do that anymore. You have enough wealth to not own bond funds. If you're going to own bonds in a rising interest rate environment, which is predict- predicted to happen over the next 10 years, and it being historically low interest rate environments, bond funds are very, very dangerous, very dangerous for a lot of reasons. But let me really quickly talk about our whole show, right? Every week, we've been doing this show for, I don't know, years now. It's coming to you through a, a charity. Paul and I are simply financial instructors for that charity. This charity charges $29 for people to attend to get education about how to build a retirement plan. And these donations that are raised go to many of the local charities to feed the the children, uh, the depression clinic. We do things with the Alzheimer's clinics, the Leukemia Lymphoma Society. So when you're making a $29 donation to charity, not only are you supporting a charity, but you're also going to get eight hours of education, a 200-page textbook. And I'm going to tell you, these are advanced courses. This isn't for the average retiree with $200,000 safe for retirement. These courses are designed for people who have resources, who are looking for the most efficient, best path to go through retirement. It's eight hours taught at all the major universities. If you'd like to register, go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org or call 800-240-8981. And we'll be back. There's much more Retirement Education Hour straight ahead. Great to be here in the studio with Kirk Cassidy, Dr. Paul Mettler of the Retirement Education Foundation. The foundation sponsors several courses that you can take advantage of, and these are deep dives into retirement planning, all you need for a modern retirement. If you'd like to sign up for these courses that are sponsored by the Retirement Education Foundation, you can do so by calling 800-240-8981, or you can visit the website, retirementplanningedu.org. And don't forget to like the foundation on Facebook. Just search for it, Retirement Education Foundation. Now, Kirk and Paul, we've been talking about the 60-40 rule. That includes a conversation about bonds. And there's a difference, right? Bonds versus bond funds. Tell us more about that. Well, this is a topic I know Paul really likes to talk about. So I'm going to try not to, even though it's really hard, because I never shut up as our listeners that have been listening to us for a while No. But I'm going to try to let Paul have a big part of this segment. But really quickly, a bond fund is a company that holds, on average, let's say 100 to 200 individual bonds, right? So when you invest in a bond fund, so in your 401ks or your, if you own mutual funds that are bond funds, those, you don't own the individual bonds. You are simply a shareholder of a company that owns those funds. Now, some of you, not very many, might own individual corporate bonds, muni bonds, or treasury bonds. You might. And if you do, that means you actually own those individual bonds, and you are able to control whether you buy and sell those individual bonds. So I I would say this. The reason why most of you don't own individual bonds is to do it properly. And I know some people will do it differently, but to do to own, truly own individual bonds, you really need $250,000 of investable assets to only purchase individual bonds so that you can have the right quantity and sizes for true diversification and liquidity uh, benefits. It's really important. We're not going to go into details why. Now, most of you own the bond funds, right? And this gives you access to own all these different bonds, so it gives you diversification, but Paul, share why bond funds, particularly over the next 10 years, are, are good. My prediction is most bond funds won't make it. You, you will have a, a, a uh, what am I trying to say, Paul? A, a loss. Oh, my gosh, I'm struggling. A negative? A negative real return. Holy cow. Thank you, Paul. I, I know, I See, to what thank saying. God my brother's here to <laughs> save me again, my older brother. A negative real return over the next 10 years. It's just not going to drive performance. Right. 
I mean, Why? I, well, I mean, I think I think it goes back to, and I think you do a good job explaining the difference between a bond fund and a bond, right? The reality is when you own a bond fund, which I think you quoted like 95% of what people own, you actually aren't in the driver's seat. You're not the person making the decisions about when the individual bonds within that fund are getting sold, right? Correct. You have a manager making that decision. So the reality is people always say, well, if I just wait till maturity, I won't lose money. But when you own bonds within a bond fund, you're, those fund managers are not waiting to maturity. They're buying and selling all the time. They can't wait they, till maturity because of the rules of the fund, right? Right, right. And, and we know this because we analyze these things all the time. We see, on average, the, how often these managers are buying and selling. They're selling, you know, three, four, five, six, seven hundred times in one year. So that's, uh, well, hold on. Huh. Uh, three, four, five, six, seven hundred percent turnover ratio that's right that means they're being bought and sold three four five times everything everything let me let me explain it really quick so in this is something you all can look up so you can all go look up your bond fund and look for something called turnover ratio turnover ratio is how many times the manager of that fund is going to buy and sell the bonds within the fund this is important and here's why it's important what you're going to find is on average the turnover ratios are somewhere between 150 and 250% per year, which means if your bond fund has 200 bonds in them, in a one-year period, every single one of your bonds are being bought and sold twice. If you have a 200% turnover, that means everything is being bought and everything is then being, everything's being sold and then rebought and sold and rebought. And that causes transaction fees. It can cause a spread. But what it causes, Paul, is when interest rates go up. This is important for you guys to understand. Everyone wants interest rates to go up a little bit so you can make some money. But when, if you own the bond fund, if you own the bond and interest rates go up, the value of that bond goes down, right? Because you already own a bond that's paying less, right? If you own a bond and in, that interest rates go up, your interest rate doesn't go up. You already have the bond at that lower interest rate. That makes the value of your bond worth less. So can, can I just... So what happens when they buy and sell, Paul, in a rising interest rate? Right. So, so it, again, if you own a bond fund, yep. and it, within that fund, there's a lot of individual bonds, and the managers yep. are buying and selling. When interest rates go up and they're selling those individual bonds within that fund, they're losing money. They're, bu- they're selling it at a discount. Right. So because you are not in the driver's seat, you don't get to decide whether those individual bonds within that fund are going to mature when they sell them. And trust me, they are buying and selling them. They have no choice. They have no choice. At the end of the day, what's going to happen is they're going to sell it at at a discount when interest rates go up. And when they do that, you lose money. So people may not believe or understand why don't the managers have a choice to buy and sell. If you want to understand, you really have to come to the class because we spend. This is what we do. We break down all these different topics in the class. It, 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 it's a lot easier to explain than in an eight-minute segment on a radio show, right? So they do. They have to sell. And right now, the average is 150 to 250% turnover ratios. So all of you, go look at your statements over the last few months. As interest rates have been rising, you will see your bond fund getting, getting hurt, losing money, a lot of money. This is why most experts, most firms, most everybody is telling you it's going to be a lost decade for bonds, especially bond funds. You're not going to make money. And, but yet this is still what people are telling you to do for your retirements, to buy bond funds, 60% in stocks, 40% in bond funds. It's crazy. It's broken. There's a better system. You just have to attend an eight-hour course so you are educated, empowered, and recognize you will come away from those classes better in understanding how to plan for retirement, in most cases, more and better than most of your advisors. I'm not exaggerating, right? So all you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity. It's a 200-page textbook. You get eight hours of classroom time. We are streaming it live during COVID, or you can come to one of our small groups at a number of the different universities. If you'd like to register, go to Retirement Planning edu.org retirement plan edu.org there's much more with kurt cassidy and dr paul mettler coming up next 
back with Kurt Cassidy, Dr. Paul Mettler with the Retirement Education Foundation. As we've been telling you, the foundation sponsors several courses that you can take advantage of. And these are really instructive and comprehensive courses to help you get up to speed on all you need to know to plan successfully for your retirement. You can get registered for one of the courses by going to the website, retirementplanningedu.org. And remember, they are in person, but you also have the choice to attend a digital course. You can call if you'd like to register as well, 800-240-8981. And to learn more about what the Retirement Education Foundation is doing to help you on your road to retirement, be sure to check out their Facebook page. Just search for Retirement Education Foundation. Now, Kirk and Paul, we've spent quite a bit of time on the 60-40 rule today, how it applies, how it doesn't apply, why it might be just an outdated rule of thumb. And as we've seen the changes take place and we've seen that the 60-40 rule might not be applicable today, tell me what is the financial services industry doing to replace it? Well, candidly, they're scrambling a little bit, right? I, I think what most are saying, the Susie Ormans, the Ramses, the Seagulls, some of the louder, more prominent voices are telling you to take on more risk. They're saying going to an allocation that looks more like a 75-25. And we already talked earlier why that's a problem, right? A 75-25, if we had a 2008 event, would lose 43%. And we already know people don't manage risk well with their money in retirement with 35% of people over the age of 65 panicking in March and going to cash. So that isn't the solution. The other thing they're suggesting is replacing the bonds, Paul. And I'm going to ask you to sort of pepper us with some of the, the, I'll throw a few out. I want you to throw a few out, but they're talking about replacing the bonds with some other type of alternatives. One comes to mind. They're talking about high yield or junk bonds, which That is a disaster waiting to happen, right? That is when we have a recession, those are going to default. There's going to be problems. And the yield isn't high enough. A high yield means it's just less likely they can pay you back. And the theories are supposed to pay you a much bigger return, but they're not right now because everyone's searching for yield. So there's so much money going into high yield that there's no return on it. Right. I mean, can I remind you of the savings and loan crisis? Yes. Right. We don't have to go into this idea of actually increasing our investments into institutions or companies that are not very sound. Not a really good idea. You know, it's amazing. As I was thinking as you were talking. History repeats itself? It, it does. You know, it's amazing that, I, that there are people who are actually suggesting for people going into retirement that the solution to the 60-40 rule is to take more risk. <laughs> I mean, I, I, but then I've also heard people talk about, well, maybe 40% of your money should be in cash. Right, you, you have one extreme and you have the other extreme, right? Let's just put 40% of your money Please in cash. Please don't do that. Right? You you hear it quite a bit, I right? Know. Come to the class, you'll know why. That that Talk about underliving your means. I mean, right. you're really not going to be able to get much money out in retirement. Right. I mean, that's right. that's living retirement in straight Am I wrong? anxiety. I, have you not heard that? No, I have. And I think, right. Paul, I think, Paul, if someone's thinking about that, I think they should come. Run. <laughs> no, they should come see you in your right. prior life when right. you were a psychologist because there's more of an anxiety issue than anything. Right. That's not a solution, right. guys. No, it's not. It's not. But you hear it all the time. I know. Right. right? So, you know, you, you said something about junk bonds, right? I the one thing I worry about is it goes back to the whole bond fund. I would guarantee you, all of you listening, Kurt talked about don't own junk bonds. I guarantee you, if we could poll all of you, you would all say, I don't own junk bonds. They do. Let me tell you something. In those bond funds that you own, within those funds, I guarantee you, you have companies, bonds that are junk. Or or they now call them high yield. High yield, right? So that's not a solution. Other, other, I've heard well, real estate. Yeah, a lot of REITs, a lot real of, estate. Right. Uh, again, highly volatile, right? Right. Big risk. Commercial real estate They're right now? They're talking about replacing what used to be stable, safe for real estate. Highly volatile. Highly. Standard deviation, really high. Antique cars. Antique art. I've not heard this. Yes, antique art. You can bundle together and buy oh, right. wine. I mean, right. you can invest in wine. Right. Gold. Right. Bitcoin. Bitcoin. Right. Bitcoin so is the, the thing. highly speculative. We're going to replace our stable investments and stick in Bitcoin that goes right. up and down by 8% a day. Right. A day. Right. Look, gotta, guys, you got to use this. Com- what, what is, what's, I mean, you th- it seems crazy. Greed. Greed. I mean, how do we go from 
40% bonds, and the whole purpose of the 40% was to have some stability. Sequence of return risk. The purpose is to eliminate volatility. Right, right. Volatility is your enemy. You've right. got to have some sources of accounts that you can take from when the market's volatile. That was the whole purpose of the 40%. And now they're giving you, it's just people have short memories. It, here's the bottom line. The 60-40 doesn't work with the 4% rule anymore. It can't work. In our whole industry, that's the Monte Carlo. That's the dial of success, whether you have enough or not. That is every major firm's solution, every major wirehouse. This is their retirement plan. And the only way, Paul, the only way they can back test and the only way they can use the 4% rule now is if you put 75% in stocks and 25% in bonds. That is why they're doing it. It's self-serving. It's not to help you. It's to maintain that business model they have of taking out 4% a year. Right. It's, it's I, I, ludicrous. So, so I agree with you. I also think that there, you know the saying, if all you have is a hammer, everything looks like a nail. There's some truth to that. I, I do think that part of the problem is, listen— not everybody out there who's an advisor who doesn't know what they're doing, you know, who's giving you bad advice has bad intention. Part of the problem is they just don't know any better, right? That's all. They have one tool, and that's the tool they use. A hammer and the nail. A hammer and a nail. That's what they got. So what's the solution? The solution is planning. Look, that's right. And, and education, understanding the traps, understanding one size fits all does not work for those of you who have resources. It's why the foundation was created. It's why they teach classes at all the major universities. It's an eight-hour course. Small groups right now we're teaching at some of the universities. We're streaming it live until COVID ends. If you'd like to register, you can go to retirementplanningedu.org, retirementplanningedu.org, or you can call 800-240-8981. Investing involves risk, including the potential loss of principal. Any references to protection, safety, or lifetime income generally refer to fixed insurance products, never securities or investments. Insurance guarantees are backed by the financial strength and claims-paying abilities of the issuing carrier. This radio show is intended for informational purposes only. It is not intended to be used as the sole basis for financial decisions, nor should it be construed as advice designed to meet the particular needs of an individual situation. Retirement Education Foundation is not permitted to offer, and no statement made during the show shall constitute tax or legal advice. Our firm is not affiliated with or endorsed by the U.S. government or any governmental agency. The information and opinions contained herein provided by third parties have been obtained from sources believed to be reliable, but accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed by Retirement Education Foundation. This radio show is a paid placement.